So, hi everyone, welcome back to Not the Half of It. This is episode three. I have had an incredibly long hiatus because I've been on a bit of a journey. Uh, so we're back. We're having an entirely new format. This is off the cuff and live, and we're bringing in other humans. So today we have Serge Magnavox, um, who goes by Hello. they, them pronouns, and Serge, would you like to say a little bit about yourself before we roll our intro music? Sure, absolutely. So I'm Serge Magnavox. Thank you for introducing me, Professor Persephone. Um, I am a filmmaker in the DMV area, and I am a blogger and writer. And that's uh, that, that about sums it up in five seconds. Great. So today we're going to be talking all about non-binary identities and uh, how fucking awesome the Matrix is. So... Yes. Here's where we roll the opening music. In a world thick with bullshit, we need someone who can call bullshit. And that's not the half of it. Sometimes you just need to vent Especially when all of your patience is spent And well, that's not the half of it That's not the half of it Tell us how you really feel, Persephone Not the Half of It is brought to you by Critical Thinking. If you don't know what it is, please look it up. Welcome to Not the Half of It, Serge. Thank you for having me. So, uh, you actually approached me about doing some kind of uh, collaborative um, podcasting type experience. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you were hoping that we could accomplish today? So honestly, I don't really have many close trans friends that I could talk to about these things. And only recently did I start to realize that trans people kind of have a different lens on life and the things that we go through and interact with on a daily that our cishet friends do not either perceive or have to struggle with or go through. So the more that I started talking to you, I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. These things are not talked about in the LGBT community. Why? Why is there also a box in the LGBT community that they're trying to push non-binary people to be in as well? Mm -hmm. You know, why does everything have to be on some kind of marker system, you know, here in, in our culture? And I, I think the term non-binary itself is kind of like, hey we realize that we are not on the polar opposites of male or female. We're going to identify as either outside of it or in between. And we don't want to be put into a box. So why, why is there kind of, I don't know, I don't want to call it the man. Why is there something trying to put non-binary people in a box? What makes something about someone who identifies as non-binary okay or not okay? I thought it was the space to be comfortable as yourself. Mm -hmm. and how you want to represent yourself to the world instead of, hey, you're non-binary. Why are you dressed like this? Aren't you supposed to be like this? Mm -hmm. What? Where? How? What? Where? Uh, I, I don't know. I just can't fathom it. So I'm hoping that you and I can have this discussion for maybe other trans folks or non-binary folks, agender folks, whatever you want to identify as to go, hey, wait a minute. Me too. Yes. You know? Someone needs to say it. I definitely want to say it because this is the way I connect to other people. And this is the way that I can find, you know, I don't want to say I, I use this platform and this media medium, I guess, to validate myself. But I just want to see, are the things that I'm feeling and experiencing going on in someone else? Mm -hmm. So this is definitely why I wanted to bring up that discussion. Maybe hopefully we can share our stories and kind of uh, see how many things parallel in both of our journeys. Yeah, absolutely. First of all, I have to say your experiences are valid. And having spoken to many, many trans and non-binary folks, um, I've heard 
this story a lot. Um, so so your everything that you're going through, you are not alone. The biggest problem, the biggest frustration is the complete lack of understanding and uh, resources that are out there uh, for non-binary folks. I mean, they're... For the more traditional trans folks, of which I'm not even trans, traditionally trans, um, mm-hmm. I am I am a non-binary woman, which which that breaks everyone's fucking brain too when I try to explain it to them. So so I totally I totally get it um, wh- where you're coming from, and uh, as someone who has transitioned and then detransitioned and and really just I've swam up and down the the gender river back back and forth. Uh, I'm I'm intimately familiar with 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 all of these feelings and, and experiences, even if I haven't personally had them, I feel like I've met people who, who, who have. So, um, lost my trail of thought there a little bit, but, um, but yeah, it's everything that you're saying is, yeah. is valid, needs to be talked about and needs to get out there. Something yeah. that I have noticed recently is that on Twitter, um, and people say that Twitter's not the real world, but Twitter really is. It's it's a it's a blown up, um, it's a blown up example, uh, an over exaggerated example of what's happening in the real world. But uh, Twitter is a group chat with the entire planet. So to say that it's not the real world is 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 kind of uh, uh, just. Just it's plain wrong. <laughs> yeah, know? and anything on the internet nowadays is like an extension of your direct thoughts. Mm-hmm. I think, and I feel sometimes that on the internet, you can say things that you fail to say in real life. And the reason why I use the word fail is because not just social anxiety or anything like that, but your mind is really fast. And in order to speak to someone, it has to kind of go through the filter of your body before it can come out. Yes. So between you and the computer, it's like, boom, you, you kind of skip that step mm-hmm. of going outwardly to try to transmute the thought and communicate it into the language that you speak. You yes. know what I mean? No, so you... it's a faster upload of thoughts. So definitely it's <laughs> the Internet is a conversation. The Internet is people. Yes. And I think I think it's time that we that we start recognizing this as uh, as a species that that the internet is an extension of the real world it's not an alternate dimension um Mm -hmm. it is the real world the things that we say on twitter the things that we do online all have real world um uh implications exactly and just like you and me are communicating we're still human beings Mm -hmm. we're still sharing our thoughts and feelings with each other it's just now that everyone else can hear it because we're opening up them to do that you know we're giving them an opportunity to do that so what I was wondering, and I find that you said your journey, I love the way you said that, by the way. Thank you. Um, do you mind kind of talking about how you found out that you were non-binary? Because it doesn't, it's not just like you wake up one day and it's like, oh shit, I'm transgender. It never happens like that. Mm-hmm. So I would definitely want to hear how you came to be at peace with the identif- identity that you identify as currently. Currently. Okay, well, yeah. It, well, yes, uh, the identity that I, I I'm currently at peace with. Yes. Um I think I came there like 2 weeks ago or something. Mm-hmm. I'm it's very I very recently came to complete peace with my identity. Um and it has been a long journey, like I said, swimming back and forth up the gender creek. Uh, so when I first well, let's see how I go. It's really hard to like not tell the story by going back to like my very first thoughts as a human when I was three or four, <laughs> um, my first cognitive thoughts, like after I like understood English, like the, what what I'm able to remember in yeah. in terms of like the way that my brain currently works, is my first thought was wishing that I was a girl, and I was mm-hmm. living in a world that told me that I was a boy. My parents, who were the smartest people in the world, and never wrong. Uh, told me that I was a boy. My school teachers told me that I was a boy. Uh, the media, television, everything told me that I was a boy. Why? Because I had a penis. And the more that I learned about the differences, and I put that in quotes, differences uh, between uh, the boy, boys and girls, especially socially, the more difficult it 
became for me and the more distressing it was for me on the inside and the more that I wanted to be female. My very, very first burst, my very, very first best friend when I was at the babysitter and in kindergarten was female. And, um, and I, I just got along with her very, very well and like the toys and games that she liked to play with. And once I started going to school and kids started segregating themselves by sex, many of them had a head start because they'd had sisters and, and brothers in, in at home. Um, it started to feel even more painful for me. And I would see... Um, I would see the girls on one side of the room, the boys on the other. I was expected to be on the boys' side, but, like, they were just doing things, saying things, playing games that I just really wasn't interested in. Mm -hmm. uh, and it just caused me an incredible distress. And as I got older, each year, more and more would come up. Uh, people, girls would start telling me that I didn't understand what they were going through because I was a boy. And that hurt on a really deep level um, more than, like, anything on. And then when people actually were trying to insult me, they would say things like, oh, you're such a girl. And we would just be like, well, thank you. But it right? was just, you know, but it was like, it was just such a, it was just such a fucking disconnect because like, but I didn't know what was going on. And I tr tried to tell my parents, I tried to tell the world, I tried to drop these hints that I wanted to be a girl, but I, in no way did I feel uh, like comfortable expressing that because it was quote unquote wrong and disgusting um that's how the world treated it you know boys are over here girls are over here that's it and yeah. so i just i just felt like maybe i was crazy and i felt like i was the absolute only person in the world that felt this way um until i was in eighth grade and i found a book at a book sale called she's not there a life in two genders written by jennifer finney boylan and this book was a memoir um, of Jennifer Finney Boylan's uh, experiences um, from her childhood to when she realized she was transgender and when she got her um, sexual reassignment surgery, uh, or we call that gender, re uh, gender affirming surgery now, sorry. Um, and within like the first, I don't know, 10, 20 pages of that book, I was thinking, holy shit, uh, these thought processes that Jennifer is describing when she was a kid were almost identical to many of my own. Um, she describes like going out into the woods and playing a game, like an imaginary game in her head called Girl Planet, where she's just like walking around on this planet that like turned her into a girl. And it was like, wow, what? like, wow. You know, so I, I felt suddenly um, real. I felt like I suddenly existed. And um, and I learned the word for what I was feeling. I learned that, OK, the reason I am so obsessed with wanting to be a girl is because I am one, but I just have the wrong body. Uh, so then coming out of the closet was an absolute nightmare because no one in my community understood. No one knew what transgender people were their only understanding of transgenderness was the rocky horror picture show which is probably the worst example of what quote unquote trans culture is um ever and i found it to be a very frustrating mockery of what i was going through as a person um but i do absolutely give kudos to those of us in the trans community who have been able to reclaim that film, it is just always going to be triggering for me. Um, so that's when I realized I was female. I was the only transgender person that I knew. I was the only transgender person that everyone knew. So like my life was just at that time from eighth grade to like pretty much all of high school. My life was just learning everything there was to learn about being transgender. And at the time, there were four websites that explained what transgender was. None of it had any any information about non-binary or anything like that. It was just you were either male to female or female to male. And they were just as extreme polar opposites as cisgender male and cisgender female. And mm -hmm. so, like, of course, the 
MTF category of the transsexual binary was where I felt like I most aligned because I clearly wasn't um, male and I clearly wasn't cis female either. Um, of course, we didn't have that word cis back then. Uh, or if it did, it wasn't on those four websites. <laughs> so so I identified with the MTF label for, for a long time because that's that's all I had. And... Um, and so I was learning about the process, about how to get on hormones and all of this and and talking to other uh, MTF transsexuals uh, on online. And what I learned basically at the time was what you have to do is you have to get therapy. Um, gender identity disorder in the United States was considered a mental illness. So you had to be diagnosed with gender identity disorder and then prescribed hormones. And um, from talking to people, what I what I learned was that like if you didn't really ham it up, and uh, and basically threaten to kill yourself, you were not going to get that diagnosis, and you were not going to get hormones. Um, and so, like for instance, one of the one of the pieces of the narrative is, and when you go to the therapist, they'll ask you questions like, "Well, how do you feel about your penis?" And if you don't say something like it really, really distresses me and and I I want to cut it off or, or you don't say something like I've 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 tried to cut it off um, and you don't like threaten serious self bodily harm, they wouldn't they wouldn't think you are a, a, a real transsexual person and they would try to convince you that you're going through something else and that you're uh you know that 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 your identity crisis or or whatever can be resolved in in other ways and the so important make you fit into a box yeah absolutely so mm -hmm. so so they would and they would try really hard to push you back into the original box that you are coming to them because you know you don't fit into and the biggest issue with this is the biggest biggest issue with it is that these therapists were and in many cases still are, cisgender. They have no idea what it feels like to be trans, and they are essentially being gatekeepers that are deciding whether or not we are trans enough for the treatments that we feel that we need. Wow. Um, and then the second problem is that shit is fucking expensive and in many cases not covered by any sort of insurance. So... Mm -hmm. My parents weren't helping me transition before turning 18 or anything like that, right? So it was, I turned 18, I was an adult, and I was like, I'm starting the path right fucking now. I'd already researched it. I already knew it. I knew the narrative that I had to use to get the hormones. I knew what was going to happen when I went into therapy. I found a therapist. It cost me $140 an hour. And in the first session, one of the things I, yeah, one of the first things I asked bluntly was, how long is it going to take me to get this diagnosis? because I already know what I'm going through. <laughs> so that's another layer of masking for already previous years of performing as male. Yes. For other people's comfort level. And now you even have to add another layer of masking to the therapist yes. to be able to get your diagnosis because n saying it apparently is not enough no. to be believed. It wasn't okay. enough. And and so and she was saying like, oh, I don't know how long it's going to take. It takes it takes, you know, different lengths for 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 all of my clients. This could take like six to eight sessions. And I'm like, I am not paying one hundred and forty times eight for you to tell me that I'm a fucking woman because I know that I already figured that goddamn shit out. I don't want to spend, you know, all this time. And so I was I asked, like, OK, well, well what are we going to do? And she's like, well, we're going to take like some spatial analysis tests and, you know, like kind of analyze the way your brain works and stuff. And it's like, what? Sorry, what? What? Yeah. Because that assumes that every single cis male thinks exactly the same way and has a brain that works exactly the same way. And every single cis female has a brain that works exactly the same way. And if that were true we would not have so many different religions. We would not have so many different political parties or ideas. I mean, obviously, the way the brain works is individual for everyone, regardless of gender. How the fuck are you going to analyze someone's brain to figure out their gender? It was exhausting, stressful, and among 
among my most traumatic life memories is trying to prove that not only am I a woman, but trying to prove that I am transgender. Mm -hmm. uh, I lucked out because that therapist said like, okay, it seems like you're really confident about what you're looking for and possibly oh a little aggressive. Um, <laughs> so, so she recommended me to an informed consent clinic, which I had no idea existed because again, what like an informed consent clinic is, is basically a clinic that you can go to um, where you tell them like, hey, I'm transgender. I want to take hormones and they will tell you, uh, OK, um, here's what happens when you take hormones. And we want you to sign this form saying that you acknowledge you are the one that wants this and you are not going to hold us responsible because uh, you change your mind or irreversible changes to your body happen. And I'm like, yeah, that's okay, fine. Hold on. So uh -huh. that that's like part of therapy, right? No. So the informed consent clinic, it doesn't require therapy. Oh, okay. So hold on a second. It sounds to me like, hey, if this gets botched, we don't want to be held accountable for mm -hmm. anything. And it's like, it's kind of like every man for himself. If this happens, it's on you. We have nothing to do with it. Yeah. And that, see, but that's completely understandable for me for, from a legal standpoint, right? Like the traditional, the traditional pathway program to uh you know becoming becoming a true transsexual involved getting that diagnosis of the of the gender identity mental disorder and then um and then getting getting the prescription for hormone therapy so because informed consent clinics were and in many cases still are operating in a place where this is the law um they needed an alternate way, which was like, hey, yes, we administered this to them, but um, they diagnosed themselves as transgender, basically. And for me, I was like, yeah, great. That's fine. I, let me I will sign that right now. So I signed that and got on hormones at, at 18. And that was very difficult for me. But I had still memorized the MTF narrative and I had to use it every time that my gender identity was brought up and everywhere that I went and I had to use that with getting my uh, my documents changed my my passport and um, and my driver's license and everything it's like and I had to get the doctor's signatures proving that I had this you know I was receiving treatment for being transgender and and, and everything and uh, it was it's it was always like quite quite a lot of loopholes um or sorry not loopholes but a lot of hoops to jump through and just absurdly frustrating um and so in all of this time right because your original question was how did i identify as non-binary in all of this time there was one specific element well several specific elements but one very specific element that the, that cis people obsess over which is the penis you know the genitals uh i did not really care that i had a penis i mean i wore clothes over my penis my penis is like the least identifying feature of me being male or female at all mm -hmm. because like the only person that's going to see my penis is whoever i'm fucking and that's between me and the person i'm fucking not between like me and the rest of the world so I wanted breasts and I wanted my face to be more feminine and I wanted to have long hair and, 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 and you know, all, all of these you know, traditionally feminine uh, cons considered attributes. Um, but I did not give a fuck about my penis. Not really. I didn't care. And as a lesbian, I actually liked having sex with women and my penis had the same energy as an organic strap on that uh, actually had nerve endings and I could actually feel what was going on and I don't mind being a top so it was like I this you know so that was a real disconnect and that was something that I really struggled with and um you know every relationship that I had was they they ended up unfortunately they ended up with um with straight women who were they would say that they were entertaining the the possibility of being bi and but really what would happen is they they were straight in the end they really really wanted a man and so many of these relationships uh ended up 
they were great relationships that ended on a terrible note when the person that I was with was finally able to accept for themselves that I am not male and I am never going to be male. And pretty much it would be like this bittersweet uh, situation where they finally accepted me as a woman and because of that could not be with me. Um, so I had this experience so much. And then when like, so the last few people that I, that I dated, um, I was trying to explain like, Hey, 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 like, you know, um, you don't have to worry about the penis going away. Like I'm going to grow some tits and I'm going to be a hot woman, but I'll still have a penis. Like it's fine. And, and it was really difficult for me to explain that because I didn't have the word for non-binary and there were no, no records anywhere for anyone to know, like, like what, like what the fuck was that? What the fuck is a woman with a penis? Like what transgender woman wants to keep her penis? Um, hint, it's actually very common. No one, like many of us don't give a fuck. Uh, but yes, many of us want to get, get it changed too. And that's fine too. That's the whole point of, of, of non-binary. Mm -hmm. Um, but even that was like, it was not settling. It was, it was hard for me to express because I didn't know any other trans women that wanted to keep their penis. I mean, I knew the ones in porn, but I also knew that many of the trans women in porn that had, uh, their penis were literally doing the porn so that they could get money to pay for the surgery so that they didn't have to do porn anymore. Um, so surprising. yeah, so it was like, you know, th there was, that was another disconnect. And this is like, you know, what, I, what I call, I'm not, I'm not a doctor or whatever, but I would, I would call this like, you know, uh, like level four dysphoria or something. It's like, you know, it's like the next stage of trying to figure out what the fuck is going on with your gender. Um, you mean your genitals at that point? Yes. Yeah. Ultimately. But because genitals have nothing to do with gender, we know that as non-binary people, but that's really difficult for the rest of the world to understand, um, especially right. those 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 transgender people. And they do exist who do actually fit those extreme MTF and FTM categories. They are real. They are valid. They do exist. Um, but for them, it seems like it's just as difficult for them to understand non-binary folks as it is for cis people to understand non-binary folks. And so we just kind of have like this sandwiching layer levels and layers of of like uh oppression where it's like the cis people oppress all of us and then like uh they're basically called true trans or trans medicalists that oppress the non-binary folks and it's like oh my god what is the human yeah. obsession with oppression um there is a lot of learning for people who do not who can't identify with what you're going through to still accept it as being valid and that yes yeah i totally understand i have a question for you oh yeah yeah sure uh, I, I want to let you continue your story, but mm -hmm. there's a, a question in my head that I've really been wondering. Um, when you started Hormones, you you mentioned that it was a very difficult time for you. Do you mind elaborating on why it was difficult? Um, did I? Well, what was the context of me saying that? Because there were many difficulties. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure. That's that's kind of why I'm asking the question. Did I say what, that what's today? So yeah. What's so difficult <laughs> about being uh, placed on uh, hormone therapy? Like, oh, so the actual difficult part of However taking... However you want to answer it. I, I'm really curious about everything. Okay, yeah, yeah. No, sure. So taking... Well, first of all, the most difficult part was getting the hormones. Because when you're jumping through all of those hoops that I was previously describing, you're, yeah. you're like... Or at least, you know, I don't want to speak for other people. My brain was really just struggling with cognitive dissonance. Because I'm like... These are the experts. These are the scientists. These are the people that know what's going on. And they're saying stuff that isn't matching my experience. And so that was really difficult for me to process and for me to get through and work through. Um, and then actually taking the hormones was difficult um, because, well, I didn't know what to expect. I traditionally had been someone who didn't like to take medicine. I didn't like to take Tylenol or Advil when I had headaches, things like that. I really just tried to um, cure myself as, as natural as possible uh, in all ways. And so it like just taking, taking medicine was already something I didn't want to do. Um, but there was also no other way that I felt I could transition um, that would work for me. So in that circumstance it was difficult um and then the other circumstance was that was difficult is when you're taking hormones your physical body changes you the the shape 
of your body changes. The uh, the, the this the texture of your skin changes. Um, your face changes in, in in very subtle ways. Your breasts grow, and all of these are things that you can't hide. So. And I know, like people are thinking, like, why would you want to hide them? That's what you want. It's, it's it because just sets you up to be judged even more. Exactly. So, so existing in this in this weird, uncomfortable, androgynous place, uh, and also knowing that, like, my voice would not change with hormones. My voice was here, um, and it and there was nothing, there was nothing that I could do to change it. And also at the time, the um, the resources said that. That, that as a trans transgender women would never, ever, ever be able to have a, a perfect female voice. That was what many of us believed. That's uh, not true. No, it's not true. It's not true at all. But that is what many people believed, and that's what many other transgender people told themselves um, and told me and told other people like that. That 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 was that was and still is an incredible um, myth that 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 trans women can never have a good female voice and um so all of that was like would really would really stress me and so the first time i was on hormones i did get to a place where i was extremely feminine presenting but my voice was still here and my facial hair still grew and uh i'm sorry i'll trade you oh yeah any day <laughs> um so it was just it, it just became like so like that was the difficult part so like the actual hormones themselves wasn't weren't difficult that they were liberating and wonderful it was the difficult part was like interacting with the world and like you know when you're when you're just like gay or bisexual or something like this it's it's easy to like you know go to work and like just not mention it but you it's really hard to like not mention being trans when you're body is literally changing shape in front of everyone and you're changing the types of clothes that you wear and it's like you can't hide it even if no one says anything about it your body is going through serious physical changes that that cannot be hidden um yeah. and so that was scary that was not safe um at the time that i was doing uh, the first one it was like 2013 2014 ish uh in Virginia, it was still legal to fire people for being transgender because it was still considered a mental disorder that could interfere with the person's ability to perform uh, work. And that's all they care about, right? Right. Of course. So I was terrified. I was terrified that I would lose my job. Um and and that was what was really really difficult for me. And because of all of that, uh, I really you know held on to that to that true transsexual narrative as for as much as I could because like I needed that was I felt like that was the only way I could get support because you know um, cis people who feel like they're experts on everything are like well I read on Wikipedia that this is how all transgender people feel and so I also read that. And I stuck with that just so that people would believe me and support me. Um, and even to the point where I was like contemplating getting getting the uh, the gender affirming surgery. And that was not so much because I want it because the truth. OK, here's the literal, the absolute literal truth is I don't really care what is in my pants. Um, I like having sex and I like having sex with people that I love. And as long as like. Our sex is good and compatible. That's all that really matters. Uh, so because of that, like, and also knowing that the surgery was going to cost like at a minimum $40,000 and not be covered by insurance, uh, it was just kind of like not really my top priority. But I was still like trying to get myself, uh, you know, on the list and, and, and get myself to get that surgery because we had laws in Virginia and Maryland that said basically that if you don't get the surgery, you're... Um, gender marker on your driver's license is going to change back to what you were born as until you get the surgery. So it was that that whole thing really became for me just like trying to prove part of proving that I'm a woman is like, I, yes, I am so desperate to prove to 
people that don't know or care about me that I'm a woman, that I'm going to modify my body for people that I'm not going to have sex with. And that, that is what I would say was the difficult part for me. Um, and then so coming back into like the really long story about how I finally settled on the non-binary woman identity, uh, six years ago, um, when I was dating my now wife, Jessica, and we, things were getting serious, uh, you know, she was expressing a lot of discomfort with the idea of me transitioning, not because she personally had a problem with it, because she was bisexual, of course, closet bisexual. Um, she didn't, she, we had been close friends for years before she knew I was a woman and never, you know, had any problem with that and accepted me perfectly. But she was expressing concerns about like, you know, well, what, what would happen when I got the surgery and everything? Because, you know, she liked penis and I'm like, well, I, it's fine. I, I don't mind keeping my penis. Um, and then it and, it, and it progressed to a place where she was really worried about like what her family would think and what society would think. And my heart, like it, it just completely sank because I felt like this is it, you know, all of my relationships are like this. I am never going to be happy. I am never going to find love unless I just go back to being a man. Um, and so I was really struggling with that. And, um, and then at work, because by this point I had moved to Southern Maryland where people were much less advanced than they were in the Northern Virginia, DC area. And many of them, I don't even think, think had heard of, of, of the, even the, the MTF FTM transsexuals at the time. And they were really not welcoming or understanding. And my boss there was not welcoming or understanding. And it was just like, I really felt like the whole world was like crushing, crushing, crushing down on me. And so I tried to reconcile this. Like, how can I move forward in my life? Uh, and I thought, okay, let me, let me try again to be a man. And, and I recognized how much of my masculinity that I had been suppressing. Um, there were parts of it that, uh, that I actually liked that I didn't mind, uh, about, you know, about, about masculinity that I found myself re-exploring, um, and, uh, and empowering and, and I really enjoyed and, um, but I hadn't let myself feel those things. And, and so as I was going through that, uh, and feeling more powerful and at the same time getting more respect from the world, it, I, it, I started to feel like, you know, Hey, maybe it's, maybe it's okay for me to identify somewhere else along the spectrum. And I picked an androgynous or androgyne because it was basically meant to having characteristics, both male and female. And that way I didn't have to deny um, my femininity that I'd worked so hard for. And I didn't have to deny the masculinity that I was now bringing myself back to just for the purposes of being, um, accepted. And, uh, so, so I tried to exist there for a while, but, but what ended up happening was, um, existing as an, and an, as an androgyne, what ended up happening was I had stopped taking the hormones. Um, my beard started to grow back. Uh, my, I, I went through male puberty a second time. Um, and, uh, I got really, really hairy. I, I literally feel like I became like a werewolf and, uh, it was okay at first, but then it started to get, started to really crush me. Um, because the core of who I am, that the woman, the female, that little girl that struggled through elementary school uh, to find herself when she finally got that book she still existed, was and is still me. And now here I was actively suppressing her, actively suppressing myself. And that, that really hurt me. And I, and, and I, and it went on for years and years and it got, and I just kept burying it. And I, I started stress eating and I, be, and I became dangerously obese. Um, and all of that was because I was denying 
my femininity. And yes, I would I would say it was androgynous or whatever, but only when people asked. I wore neckties to work. I did, you know, I was very masculine in my presentation. Most people didn't ask. I didn't correct people on the pronouns. Um, I just accepted whatever. People who used to know me were still using she. People who were getting to know me were using he. People who didn't know what the fuck was going on were using they. And I just kind of like let it be a mess and let myself get more and more and more depressed. Uh, and it was it was really rough. And then so only more recently, I, I, I recognized like, OK, like this has got to stop. I need to get back on hormones. I am a woman. I need to re-embrace myself. I need to re-accept who I am. And that has been a journey. Um, it's required me to see a doctor and uh, get on antidepressants because I didn't even recognize how bad my depression had gotten. But hey, if you like deny your existence for six years, it's quite possible that you might have some depression. Uh, and upon like, you know, really re-examining myself and really coming back and like, like, you know, having swam that detransition stream back to male and, and trying to like hold on to the, to the androgyny rock in the middle for as long as possible. And now swimming back it like, I, I, it was very clear to me like, okay, all right. Um, nothing about my gender matters to anyone, but fucking me. I am the one who's going to decide how I'm going to present, who I am, what I'm going to do, what my fucking genitals are going to be. And if they're going to be a penis, fine, they're going to be a penis. If sometime down the line I decide I want to change it, that's a, that's my choice too. And it's no one else's fucking business but me and my wife. Um, and so embracing that, in, you know, in embracing that and understanding that and moving forward and accepting myself as um, a non-binary woman has been very liberating because it's like, yes, I'm still a woman. Yes, I still have she, her pronouns. Yes, I'm still a real transgender person. Um, but also, like, I make the rules for my body. And uh, and I've met so many non-binary people that say things like, well, do I have to take hormones? Like, no, of course you don't. You make the rules for your body. That's what being non-binary is all about. You make the rules. You are free. You are unplugged from the binary. Mm -hmm. Um and so it was probably like two weeks ago or maybe like maybe like a month ago where like all of that really, really clicked for me. And I was like, oh, fucking shit. I'm a non-binary woman. This is what it is. And like, yeah, I guess I'm just like, like, I don't know if this was an RPG. I'd be like a level 300 transgender at this point because it's like I, I've unlocked all the skills. I don't fucking know. <laughs> but that's where I am now. Um, and that is the uh, incredibly condensed and long version of how I came to terms with who I am now. <laughs> and hopefully it made some kind of sense. Oh, it made all the sense. In fact, I related to more than one of those points, especially when you were saying, you know, on the RGB and whatnot, hence why I go back to what I said about being non-binary. It's, mm -hmm. it's kind of uh, saying you're not exactly on one end of the spectrum, but you're in there. You're still, you know, but you don't fit in the box. And I really appreciate anyone who can say, hey, I'm this kind of non-binary. Here is where I am in the spectrum. Yes. And we, I wish there was more people who were comfortable enough to say that. And I wish that more people would educate themselves on that. I agree. Because we can't keep shoving everything into a box. No. That's the thing that makes me uncomfortable because, you know, it's like when someone looks at you and they're like, what are you? It's like, good fucking God. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Why? Why do I have to narrow my identity to what you are able to perceive? Why do I have to match my reality to what you are able to comprehend? Mm -hmm. No, here's what I am. This is what, this is the information you can take. This is how you can digest it. Mm -hmm. And then in the end, it is going to be your choice whether or not you want to keep me in your life or not. But however, it's not going to change how I look at myself or how I present. Yes. And um, that's why there's a movement going on with that right now, because I don't think even the LGB communi LGBT community can finalize how to defend not being in a box. Yeah. And I know that's bold of me to say, but I haven't exactly been seeing that kind of representation promised from people who are understanding. You are absolutely correct on that. Um, and I don't know how active you are on Twitter, so I don't know if you've caught on, but there is literally right now um, a 
an LGBT civil war happening online, which means it's it's also happening in in, in the real world. Um, and that civil war is like it's literally like you know um, the lesbian lesbian gays and bisexuals that are trying to remove transgender people from that uh, from the LGBT group, and uh, and they're saying like, hey, no, no, like. Uh, transgender people are something completely different that has nothing to do with sexual orientation, which is true. Um, we are different. We are a, a different category, but we are not enemies. Uh, and and so they are. There is there is a literal civil war going on right now where 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 the LGBT community is 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 fracturing, and I think that's a very serious problem because. Because even amongst, you know, like you, you may be familiar that, that with bisexuals and bisexuals feeling like they're left out of the LGBT yeah. community also because because of of that, um, be, because they're like people are other gay people and and uh, and straight people both say like, well, you you you're in a monogamous relationship with someone of one gender. So you are either absolutely gay or absolutely straight. And that just completely invalidates who they are. Uh, that doesn't make any sense at all. None of it. Or technically with a, you know, a, a cis man or something that mm -hmm. doesn't make you attracted to women any less. It's just that you're not going out and you're not cheating. So you're, yes. you're not, not polyamorous. That's why I think there needs to be some kind of reform when it comes to education about these things, because not only are we not teaching the younger generations how to figure out and embrace who they are, we're kind of erasing what could be as well. Yes. And that doesn't really leave room to grow at all. Regardless of whatever kind of community you're involved in, you know what I mean? And erasure, you're right, it's absolutely heavy because it's like, nah, you don't exist just because we can't understand you. Mm -hmm. uh, excuse me? <laughs> wow. You're probably going to have to make a part two to this or something. But, um. Oh, that's fine. We, we'll. I wouldn't be surprised if, like, this ends up being like a 20 part series. Um, <laughs> but that's fine. I would like it to be. There's I no. To be. No rules, no rules, and not the half of it. Um, yeah. So, speaking of no rules, we have one live audience member right now. Uh, Vince just popped in, and and Vince, you just feel free to unmute yourself and and join the conversation because you know why? Why the fuck not? There's no rules here. Um. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I. I'm sorry, I got distracted by by Vince showing up. Um. What yeah, were we talking same. about? <laughs> wait, wait, can I talk? <laughs> Yes, talk, talk, <laughs> talk. So we were, uh, we just got done uh, with uh, Persephone sharing her story. So now we can either transition to me talking about my story or we can take questions. But then again, I don't think Vince was there for the majority of your story. So I don't know how much he knows. Um, I know, I think I know enough to, to be able to, for, I mean, I haven't talked to Persephone in a while, but I think I know enough to be okay on this end. <laughs> All right. Okay. So yeah, let's let's hear Serge, let's hear your 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 story. So I like that I asked you when you came to peace with this identity and and I didn't expect your answer of just 2 weeks ago because remember our conversation I think it was last week mm -hmm. when I was like, "Hold up. Does that make me less of a non-binary person? Am I just denying my own femininity?" And I got to share that with you a little bit. And that's something that um it let's see. I'm I'm turning 29 so it still take it took me that long to finally figure out exactly where i fall in the non-binary spectrum and i finally have the word as of two days ago yes i'm turning 28 like in a couple weeks by the way so you know yeah <laughs> but definitely like i don't fit into the ftm box or mtf box mm -hmm. i never wanted to fit in that box so i I'm, i identify as transmasculine and i would prefer to say that now over non-binary because mm -hmm. it pinpoints where exactly I am in the spectrum. And yeah. that makes me really happy. Good. But going back, I can actually remember when I started to question my gender identity. Mm -hmm. And that was when, so first of all, I'm going to admit I have PCOS and that's a hormone imbalance where you naturally produce more testosterone. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll get to what how I got involved in a PCOS community and started to question my gender yet again because of that. But it was, I was eight years old and I already started my menstrual cycle, which is way too early in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And I started to grow breasts like a woman would. And I felt 
so unnatural. You know, my mom would have to come tell me, hey, uh, it's time for you to wear bras now. I'm like, well, what the hell is a bra? Why, why do I have to do this? This is, blech. I don't want to do that. And I don't want these lumps on my chest. That feels yucky. You know, and um, just like when you were saying about school, when they were se separating the boys and the girls, the girls would go one way, the boys would go another way. And then I felt like then there was me. Yeah. I was looking at both sides and I would really question, do I really have to pick one? Mm -hmm. Do I really have to pick one? Because I like some of the things here on the boy side, but I also like some of the things on the girl side and vice versa. There are some things I don't like. Why, why do all boys have to be athletic? And why do all girls have to be all about boys and makeup? I, I just don't understand what kind of a paradigm wants me to pick either or when I don't really give a shit about either or. Mm -hmm. So I was frustrated. But of course, I wanted to make friends and I didn't have many. So I started to perform as female and I did a horrible fucking job. Um, <laughs> my PCOS was getting worse. So I was becoming hairier. I didn't really feel the need to shave my legs. I still don't. Mm -hmm. And that made me get bullied by the guys because they're like, ew, you're a woman. You're supposed to mm -hmm. shave your legs. And I didn't I didn't really oppose that thought because I was hearing that from everyone, including a parent. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, in order to be a woman, you got to wear a bra to enhance your boobs. You got to shave your legs. You need not, don't even get me started on the whole looking thin, thin thing. I've never been thin my whole entire life. This is probably the lowest weight that I've actually been in my adulthood. But again, totally different story. So there are a couple of boxes, prerequisites, if you will, that you need to have checked off in order to be a woman. And I looked at that checklist and I'm like, do I really want that for myself? Is this organically myself? And it wasn't. And that's when I had my first breakdown. And it was in middle school because I also at the same time started to get attracted to females mm -hmm. and i'm like oh fuck am i a guy because i like girls i feel like always hanging out with the guys i relate more to them than anything mm -hmm. and but the thing is as soon as i started to call myself he i never opened up about this to, to many people because i told one of my friends in like seventh grade that i was bisexual and he said ew and i immediately shut down after that nobody gets to know who serge is that's yeah. it fuck you so I presented, I, I kept the mask on. I, I think, you know, there was a, a big dissociation from who I truly was mm -hmm. versus who people saw. And it was really dangerous. But, you know, being in middle school, who's going to really psychoanalyze themselves to the point where they're going to be like, hey, you're dissociating, you're having a double life. No, I was just trying to protect myself as much as possible. Because yeah. I already felt alienated from people as is just because of my personality alone. Yeah. Now added the whole subject of gender to it. Mm -hmm. Did I really want to be susceptible to more bullying and more reasons for people to dislike me mm -hmm. and, you know, separate themselves from me than that? No. However, the conversation internally did not stop. That dialogue split into two things. One, self-hate, unfortunately. And two, along with the self-hate, it, it had to do with, hey, why aren't you just like everybody else? And it was fucking hell. Because I couldn't understand what was going on. I didn't know what it was called, just like you. I didn't actually run into any trans resources at all. Mm -hmm. So all of this was just like me coming to my own conclusion ignorantly based off of not having any available resources, role models, or guidance as to what's going on. So internally, I was like, fuck it. I'll try just being a guy. Mm -hmm. And I went with it. And it, it also felt wrong absolutely felt wrong i tried going by he pronouns i felt like i was even more invisible than she pronoun and mm. it's like fuck uh where where do i fit in where do i go you know the biggest uh the biggest goal for someone in middle school is to fit in and unfortunately when that carried through high school and then there was a huge wave i think i was in high school in like uh 2006 ish so that huge wave, if you didn't run into it, of coming out as bisexual in high school, becoming a trend. Yeah, I was there for that. Yep, me too. And I was like, okay, wait a minute. So I'm not going to get told ew if I was bi because suddenly everybody's coming out as bi. Okay, Everyone cool. was bi. Yeah, I, I, I remember hanging out with the bi kids in high school. Yeah. And <laughs> what's interesting is that even though I did hang out with some of the bi kids in high school, I still felt 
alienated and I still didn't feel like I got that sense of, hey, I'm just like you, me too. So I couldn't differentiate between, you know, gender identity and sexuality because, you know, high school, we're all just blending in things. Together. We're all clicking. We're all conforming because who wants to be alone at this day of age? Mm -hmm. But um, when I moved into college, um, keep in mind, I was in a very toxic friendship from middle school to high school just because there was one person who seemed to listen to everything I said and everything that I identified as and they presented as not judging my identity and my gender expression when really behind my back it was completely fake can I ask um, you something that might be a little personal but sure. feel free to remove it did you ever have a relationship with uh, a guy or I mean obviously probably with a female did you have a relationship with a guy and how did that turn out uh, at what age group uh, I don't know when you can actually say you can actually have like, I guess when, when you mature enough to actually have like an actual relationship, not just like some note thing, you know, people had like a middle <laughs> school where they like gave a note to, you know, oh my God, I did that a lot. So I ain't talking shit about it. I'm just saying. Do you like, like me? Yes. No. <laughs> then, ooh, then once where the girls walk up to you, be like, Hey, just so you know, Jennifer said that she doesn't want to be with you anymore. I'm like, bitch, tell Jennifer to come tell me that. <laughs> Okay, well, that's a very easy question to answer because I've never actually been in a relationship up until after I graduated college. That's not a bad thing. At least you got through your shit. Hey, you don't want that on you. Fucking trust me, that relationship will fuck up a career path. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, and the whole being pregnant and having drama. And I don't know, I was just really allergic to people when I was younger, too, because it just... <laughs> allergic to people i fucking love that yeah, <laughs> i feel that i feel <laughs> i was chased by the gamer guys in high school because mm -hmm. for some reason i i don't know why some dude gave me the nickname hen house surge and i didn't understand what the fuck that meant and then the gamer guy started chasing me because of the, that nickname and that just made me go no what, what does that mean? what does that mean i've never heard that before yeah no idea i still don't know <laughs> i'm not gonna look it up because i have a feeling if i do it's gonna end up in the search result like blue waffle or something and i, I don't okay, want that okay I'm, I'm i'm gonna be honest i want to look this up i won't God. tell you what it is i just want to know what i just want to know what it is for my old man's sake just i won't tell you just keep going no no, no i want to know now I'm yeah tell us, tell us tell us tell us can't be that man tell us this is why we have a cis man in the chat <laughs> uh how what the fuck am I supposed to Urban Dictionary? <laughs> really? Google literally doesn't say shit. But hold on, let me see Urban Dictionary. Yeah, let me see Urban Dictionary. Uh, what grade did you say they called you this? Uh, ninth grade. Ninth grade? really into hentai so that, maybe that's my why google chrome cannot be there no i'm looking it up um you, you got me okay keep in mind this was like so deep in my memories it just came up now hen house um this could be it's uh, see it doesn't that's why do you see it persephone it doesn't make sense i'm googling right now hen oh house. wait hold on <laughs> okay, kind of get it. What? What? Tell us. What'd you find? Yeah. Um. So, hen house, according to what I found in Urban Dictionary, the term says a place predominantly occupied by women. This could be a workplace, classroom, social event, or any other public place where there is a by a wide margin more women than men the term hen house is used because of the conspicuous absence of cocks roosters in this case men uh man i hate working at bed bath and beyond this is a total hen house there's nobody to talk football with at lunch so i don't i don't think i don't understand how that could like, it doesn't make sense yeah i don't uh it doesn't make any sense i was just shown that there was the, like someone supposedly drew me as an anime character. Mm -hmm. She had huge boobs with my hair covering her face, and then you it know, said Surge on the shirt, and I'm like, that's not even me at all. Like, oh. what what is this, and why did this become my thing? You know, if you think about it, that could be more of a compliment. They could be saying, "Hey, this is a woman, not a man." 
And here's so, why there is tension right now. See, that's not a compliment because as much I'm as talking about, like at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, I, I totally still don't see it as a compliment even now. It's no, it's not. I mean, it's it's not, it's not for someone who is who is non-binary and who does not identify as a woman. Um, yeah. That said, yeah. now if anyone listening to this would like to draw me with huge tits uh, and very sexy. I, I am all for that. And I would see that as a compliment. But but again, you know, like that, 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 it, that, that is sexualizing someone um, without their consent, really. That's not, that's not okay. Um, I am giving people permission to sexualize me. I, I have no problem with people masturbating to me. I know that they do it. I know that I'm sexy, <laughs> but... Um, but you can't just do that, like to anyone. That's not okay. That's not acceptable. Um, exactly, especially when you don't feel already comfortable in your own femininity, as I was mentioning with the checklist. Yeah, it made me further, you know, detached from my femininity further because I, again, I have to meet this image that you think that I should be or am mm -hmm. in order for me to be attractive. So that means I have to not be myself in order to be accepted. Not just as a person, but somehow being attractive. Like yeah. what the fuck is that it, it it really it caused a lot of damage. And that's that's exactly how I how I felt when I presented as male and people would tell me how sexy that was. I mean, like I, I got it all the time. Um you know, people people would and they still do. They'll pull up old pictures of me when where I'm like, you know, hyper masculine with the beard and everything. And they're like, what happened to you? You were so hot. You know, you, you were such a hot man. I'm like, but that really wasn't me. You know, like I know I know that objectively I was a very sexually attractive male in 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 presentation. But that is that was not me. And that is not who I want to be. And that is not how I want to live my life. That's a prison for me. And exactly. When you start to open up the dialogue to family that you're you're thinking about that your gender identity doesn't match you, mm -hmm. and then they respond with, "But you're such a pretty girl." Okay. Yeah. Uh, first of all, first of all, I barely even feel like a girl. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, second of all, even if I was a pretty girl, I don't feel comfortable as a pretty girl. Mm -hmm. I don't even feel like I match that description, and I'm trying to figure out what I am. Whose side are you on? <laughs> you know, exactly. it's so frustrating when you're trying to say something, even though it, the struggle is obvious to uh, find the terminology and find the way to identify yourself. It's like, no, 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 you don't have to worry about it. You look good. Mm -hmm. what, is, what does looks have to do with it? That's the whole actual problem is that the looks don't match the spirit. The looks don't match the energy. And there's almost... There's not much you can fully do other than some chemicals to alter your body to present as what you match with. Mm -hmm. uh, so give, give give trans people a break. Yeah. Give give people a break because it's not um, the the biggest problem with this and continuing my story because this is where shit starts to get real. Before being be trans uh, became a trend. I'm sorry to say that, but let, let's admit it kind of became a trend. Yeah. Well. We're going to cycle back to that because I got a lot to say about that, but... Yes. Yes, definitely. Uh, me too. Trust me. Hardcore. I just okay. can't believe it. Anyhow, um, the, going back to the whole toxic friendship, mm -hmm. um, I was really afraid to come out as, you know, as anything other than female to that one best friend, but she was kind of making me feel bad about my... And I was trying to be like, hey, um, I don't feel like I'm man or woman here. And then she was like, well, what are you then? And it, and just because I didn't want to lose that friend, I adopted, <laughs> yeah, I adopted that pronoun, it. Ooh. And um, I didn't feel good about it, but mm -hmm. I also did not want to be alone. And I passively started to call myself that, which I don't know how that gave her permission or the authority to also keep undermining me with that, I don't want to call it a pronoun, but that word. And it just became me for a while. Just, just, just a, a quick, a quick pause. It is a valid pronoun for, for some people, and so you know, totally no, no issue with that. No disrespect to its, but anything that's not your pronoun when, uh, is it's being used for you, hurts. So sorry, I just wanted to jump in with that. Oh, you're absolutely right. It does hurt, especially when you're trying to accept it yourself, but it still doesn't feel right. No. And, you know, it, it is part of the journey on figuring out where you stand on the spectrum. But at the same time, when something hurts that bad, you shouldn't force yourself to keep it. 
No, no, not at all. That's the point of this whole conversation. But, Absolutely. Um, yeah, I, I let that friend go because I, I saw that, uh, well, <laughs> I don't want to get into her business, but I was just told, you know, some things about her and I finally realized it's time to move on. And when I did, I, the internal dialogue got so much better. And then years and years later, when people started to, uh, you know, be like, hey, I'm trans, I'm trans, I'm trans, I'm like, oh, shit. So that's what it is. Mm-hmm. So that's what it feels like. A man was born as a woman and cannot accept that their body is all of their identity. I'm fucking for it. You know, it felt like it felt like me. However, again, going back to the whole MTF, FTM, non-binary didn't become a popular term or wasn't widely accepted until years and years later it still isn't yeah in in the twitter discourse and everywhere i mean it's like it doesn't even come up you know when i'm fighting for trans rights uh the arguments that i'm having they don't even bring up non-binary people and um it doesn't it doesn't happen i mean like they they want to attack me because because i have a penis because every penis is is inherently a danger to all women um which is obviously not true but that is that is the argument that they have, um, the argument for why trans women should not be allowed to use uh, women's bathrooms and, and, and et cetera. And non-binary people don't come up at all. But but honestly, where the fuck are non-binary people supposed to pee? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm happy if they make a non-binary bathroom, if they mm-hmm. can just like put a couch in there and it could be like the perfect thing between having some uh, urinals and well, a couch um, and an Xbox. And, yeah. 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 And uh, oh, 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 what is it called? A diffuser. Put a diffuser in there. What for marijuana? No, for like, like essential oils. Nobody oh, wants okay. to smell poop. Okay, yeah. that's fair. That's fair. Um, Going along with myth that the female bathrooms smell better, which most of the time they do. I don't know. <laughs> I don't. I I was born in Osmic. I don't have a sense of smell. I have no idea. I've been in all the bathrooms, and like <laughs> they're all equally gross. They're bathrooms. Like, I just want to pee and get out. Um, <laughs> but. Oh, um, I was on set and we had to shoot in the bathroom. Let me tell you, the lights heating up everything in there. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. The smell of your eye <laughs> just clung to your clothes. Oh boy. Yeah. I, no, I believe it, that. It wasn't nice. Um, but uh, yeah. yeah, wrapping it up and, and, and coming to uh, now, it's like, okay, I know that there's a spectrum in both gender and sexuality. And all of mm-hmm. this was just internal dialogue, internal dialogue up until I was like, okay, I'm, I'm non-binary. Binary. And uh, announcing myself as non-binary, especially to, um, at the time, college, again, film community, film school, I thought that that would make me um, a match to other non-binary folk, but it didn't. Because everyone was still judging where you are on the spectrum and how you present and where you identify. And you know what? I'm more non-binary than you. What even is that? Fuck that. And that's, that, okay, that is true everywhere, right? So so part of my own struggle, like even, even with my first transition, and I bounced around between a few different support groups. Uh, and at the time, again, non-binary wasn't a thing. So like the people in the support groups were either MTF or FTM. And those were still the terms that we used. Um, they, a lot of them were competitions between like who is more trans than the other? And they would like give each other like, you know, fucking stars and shit for like who had the best walk and who had like, and that was like, okay, that's fucking disgusting and fucked up. Like that is not real. That is not yeah. that. I mean, you know, if this was RuPaul's Drag Race or something, fine, you know, but we're not trying to have a goddamn competition to be like, who's, you know, it's not a fucking beauty pageant. This is like goddamn real people, right? These are our yeah. real feelings, right? Not everyone is fucking a flawless, you know, model. And that's not what a support group is supposed to be like. And so now I'm seeing that exact same thing happen. Like what you're describing, Serge, in in the non-binary community where, where be, be, again, because like we said at the beginning, there's not enough information about non-binary identities out there that now people are, are feeling like they're trying to define themselves. And in many cases, it is becoming a very toxic competition, which is fucked up. Come on, people. Yeah, yeah exactly. We, we should be allies. If you meet another bi- non-binary yes. person, it's like, why can't we just form our own little community being non-binary instead of judging each other over apparently how non-binary we are yeah that that one was a slap in the face vince all right i don't mean to interrupt no, i gotta you... bounce okay I got another meeting i gotta attend to just want to no show worries. off hey love your shirt <laughs> he's wearing and an emperor pig shirt now. so 
I got a sticker. I washed. I'm sorry, the damn did you thing just say and... ignore your the, ignore the cum stain on your shirt? <laughs> it looks like a cum stain, but it's uh -huh. it's a sticker that uh -huh. melted to the fucking shirt, and now I can't get a bitch off. So every time I wear it, it has this fucking cum stain on it, and it bothers the piss out of me. I can't get it off to save my life to scratch this shit off. <laughs> well, hey, it All was right, great but... having you pop in for a minute, Vince. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, it was good meeting you, Serge, and uh, obviously. Talk to you later, Stephanie. Take care, man. Yeah. You too, man. Um, yeah, so, okay, I, I do want to, uh, I'm sorry, was there, some, there anything else that you wanted to say on that topic before I before I jump around a little bit? No. Okay, Um, I do want to jump back to what you said earlier about um, transgender becoming a trend. Uh, yes. Could you elaborate a little bit on what you mean by that? Uh, suddenly with the uh, a little bit after the wave of everyone becoming bi okay uh, uh early college so like eh, late 2008 early 2009 no late 2009 uh, a bunch of friends of mine were like hey we're I'm, I'm trans i'm i'm actually a guy and everyone started finding and doing this and that and i, I was really confused because why suddenly is everyone doing this i didn't know what it meant i was confused and I was even more confused as to why some people were doing it sometimes, but not other times. You know what I mean? Like, why were they saying that they're trans and they weren't actively trying to learn about anything trans? Or I guess this is going to sound really ignorant. But again, this is my thought process at the time, not now. Why mm -hmm. were they not trying to present more as trans, meaning whatever identity they per defined as? They just didn't. And then later on in life, they gave that identity up. They're like, oh, no, we're not trans. So I just, I don't know what the hell just happened there. Like, why a bunch of people around me were identifying as trans when they were just trying it out, but then they're no longer trans, 90% of them. And uh, I was really confused about what the hell was happening there. And then that escalated to, um, as you were saying about Twitter and online communities, there was a bunch of trans people coming out online and coming out everywhere. And you'd hear these heartbreaking stories about how they were being kicked out of their homes and they're trying to find themselves. And um, it switched to Facebook groups online using trans as a shield to be more acceptive, uh, being accepted, excuse me. Uh, this is a little bit hard for me to talk about. I saw that there was a trend online. If anyone was cishet, it's like you were hated on by the people who identified as trans. And if you weren't trans, then you're the one excluded all of a sudden. You know, uh, what was it? SJWs, there we go. It was the SJWs coming out and saying, no, if you're cishet, that's like, you're automatically bad. And that's a very poor wording because it's not their wording, but that's basically the movement that was being pushed. Am I making sense? Yeah, you you, you are. Um, give me one second. Uh, we've got uh, Jesse Keaton trying to join um oh there he is oh okay okay he got in all right um we were trying to troubleshoot there a little bit jesse you you feel free to to just jump in the conversation uh anytime we're obviously not um overwhelmed here with uh with with people so um so serge was just talking about the concept of the "Quote unquote transgender trend um, and people who would hop in and and claim a trans identity to use as a shield for um, for being, I guess, different from the cis cishet norm normality. It's used for social superiority, as if if you mm -hmm. weren't trans, then you were less than. And okay. when the hell did that become a thing? And again, it was just SJWs who were using that. Um, I have, now you know I'm a writer and I'm mm -hmm. a sci-fi writer and I know other creatives as well. A friend of mine who is actively in groups was targeted by, I don't even know what to call this person. She was claiming that her stories and my friend's stories were not good just because there weren't enough trans people in there and that they should oh, be fuck. trans. Okay. in order for her stories to be successful and no. i'm looking at this chat like who what what the fuck is happening so that i don't know what what the fuck that chat is but that just sounds like nonsense tox toxicity like that's that, i mean like that's that's I can, 
I completely agree. I, I completely agree. And I think that with any sort of social movement, which I feel like trans people are kind of in the beginning or in the middle of a social movement right now, there's always some sort of fallout. There's always some yes. sort of fallout for people. And mm -hmm. people have their own individual reasons for adopting things to shield themselves. You know, um, I feel like, for example, um, just people who would consider themselves, quote unquote, straight up gay, they, uh, they adopt things like the fashion, the mm -hmm. voice, the voice, as people put it. You know, and it does, it serves no other purpose other than to identify who you are. And it's, um, it's almost like joining a group slash family, you know, you're, you're, you're making it clear who you are and you're defending that ferociously. Yes. Um, so that's just, that's my opinion about it. I kind of understand where you're coming from though. But wouldn't that actually cause a problem for trans people who are not accepted and are trying to come out? And now most people are going to believe that trans people are now these uh these uh what's the word fanatics fanatics of mm -hmm. defending their identity and excluding anyone else who's not that that's what this group managed to to push and i don't understand so, why they're pushing that yeah i don't i've never i don't know that group um i would say if you're still in that group get the fuck out um sorry oh, no, i but, didn't mean group no. as in like literal facebook group. oh okay I mean, like, there are chunks of people that, who are too that. no that, i mean i don't that is that is just sheer Tox toxicness um and uh here's the thing the the, the the concept between transgender being a trend uh it's it's one of it's it's a very um hot button issue for me because you know as as a kid that this was something that was pushed on me when i was trying to come out like you know uh, my brother is gay and he had come out of the closet like 10 years before um he, you know we're, we're 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 about a decade apart and I didn't know that. I didn't know he was gay. You know, he had a different mom. He was living in a different state. When I came out of the closet as transgender, um, my parents were like, oh, you're you're just doing this because your brother's gay and, and you're trying to jump in, jump on them. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? My what? So like, you know, of course, I emailed my brother and I'm like, hey, what the fuck is all this about? Like, you're gay. Like, and, and you know, and, and, you know, he he thought I was getting mad at him and and um and and he got nervous and we had this you know this awkwardness and like no 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 it's cool i mean i, I, I fucking love you i'm just like i try i'm trying to come out as transgender here and like <laughs> uh, i'm getting i'm getting like uh, attacked for it because people are saying I'm, I'm going through a phase and i'm jumping on a trend because like they don't fucking know that transgender is not the same thing as like gay and um first of all i i, I want to dispel that that myth right now that that being trans is not a trend Gerant, uh, gender variant people have existed from the dawn of humanity and exist in every culture and have existed in, in in every time frame so i think that the narrative of it being a trend is uh extremely damaging now i will say of course just like in every group there are going to be some uh people that have some dangerous maybe extremist ideas uh an example would be, I would say, Buck Angel in the transgender community. And if you've been following me on Twitter, you might have seen that I beefed with him a little bit. Buck Angel is a uh, very famous, well-known trans man. Uh, he was in porn for a while. When I worked at an adult store, I used to like really push up, push his um, his DVDs because I was like, you know, this is so cool, man. Like, check this out. This guy's my family. Um, but he has been pushing the 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 very toxic narrative of uh you know biological reality being something that we cannot ignore uh and pushing pushing for uh sex based rights in the in terms of biological reality and stuff like that and i would say that is um a real dangerous uh a narrative to be spreading because what what happens is um it it empowers people especially transphobic people uh to enact laws and regulations uh based around people's chromosomes and genitals uh and using that to determine who is allowed not only in what bathroom but who's allowed in what shelter um and that gets really, really dangerous, especially for trans people on 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 the streets, homeless trans people who who like they have nowhere safe to be, right? Uh, and especially in prisons. I mean, like places where people are just, you know, even even cis het people uh, are way out of their element when they when they have to go to these places are are, are now 
extremely dangerous uh, environments for for transgender people uh, to get into. So I don't know um, what those people were. I don't know if those people were were real trans people that like have have gotten some really weird ideas in their head or if they're like Internet trolls or, or what. But that that is that is toxicity. Um, and and there is no such thing as being more trans than than another just like there's no such thing as being more cis than another like Mm -hmm. what the fuck you know um i i want to step in you mm -hmm. you keep talking about things like oh i have a i you know i have something to say about it and we keep going along i'm just trying to because i keep having more and more to say go Um, ahead jesse i think transgender people you know history repeats itself i think trans people right now based on conversations we've had things that i've read I think you guys are in a, a negotiation process with society right now, just like how gay people, which are, I would say, pretty much for the most part accepted, you know, at this point, not completely, mm-hmm. you know, I don't want to, I don't want to like, you know, I'm not gay. I don't want to like, you know, say, say yes or no on that. But I feel like in the, the you know, the modern view of society, I believe that they're, they're accepted for the most part now. Mm-hmm. Uh, that being said, there was a, like a negotiation period where it's like, as gay people, we are okay with this and we're not okay with this. And, you know, movies and TV shows would push their own narrative. Hi, I'm your gay friend. Yeah. Like, I'm into fashion, you know, blah, 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 blah. Not all gay people are like that. No. My brother-in-law's gay as hell. He's in Harvard right now. Mm-hmm. He has a PhD already. You know, they're not, you know, so you, it's a negotiation. You're like, we're okay with this as a trans community. We're not okay. So certain people are sticking to certain stereotypes and, mm-hmm. like, going back to what's a uh, Serge Magna Magnavo. I'm sorry, Magnavox. <laughs> sorry, that's just the funniest pronunciation. It's Magnavox. <laughs> Magnavox. Yeah, Magnavo. You said Magna. <laughs> Magna. Magnavo. Very, very um, fancy. The new fragrance. <laughs> Magnavo. You have not lived until you've had some Magnavo, <laughs> but uh, it's a French dessert. Uh, <laughs> but going back to what she was saying. I think that people, they, they, I'm sorry. I'm no, that is correct. I, uh, pr- pronunciation still, I mean, premium Persephone's had so many conversations about this pronunciation. It's such a learned behavior. Yeah. But, if I could uh, pronounce, voice, though, it would be more obvious. I would, but I can't really do that right now. So, no, and, and you know, people are going to perceive you as like assholes, but you're, you're, you're making it clear right now how you like to be treated and that's okay you know i feel like um it's a this might be me coming off a little too strong but another group of people that i feel like for a while had very similar opposition um is like you know i feel like the more i read about black women for example Mm -hmm. um definitely not getting you know as much treatment as black men black men not getting as much treatment as white men you know i feel like a lot of people really perceive black women as like bitches when in fact it's like you got to really think about everything that they've gone through their lives and you people people don't think enough you you know you you're made trans people i feel like trans people are making it very clear how they want to be treated right now and i think people need to be a little bit more empathetic and like just accept that those people exist and like they want to be treated how they want to be treated you know what i'm saying there is diversity in every group. Uh, I mean, that is, you know, that's just what it is. You know, the, these groups are, they're generalizations. And they're generalizations that eh, in an ideal world, we wouldn't have to make, right? Like in an ideal world, it wouldn't fucking matter, right? Like I would just say like, hey, you know, I know y'all thought I was a man or whatever, but like actually I'm female and people would be like, oh, cool, my bad. And we would just move on from there. Um, and the same thing, like, you know, skin color and all of that, like in an ideal world, like that wouldn't matter. We we should, you know, just like Martin Luther King says, and I, and I always hold this, you know, dear to my heart, like, you know, we need to judge people by the content of their character and, and not by the color of their skin and, and extend that to not by any literally anything else not by the fucking gender not by the eye color not by you know how tall or 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 how well someone fits into an arbitrary list of um uh of characteristics we need to define people by their sorry we need to under to to god damn it what's the fucking word we need to um to you guys know what i'm trying to say here yeah no i i know exactly Um, what you're trying to say to judge people when, when people talk about trans people too they need to talk to them, talk, because I, I had a huge discussion with my wife the other night, and it was mostly about race and not really about trans people. But sure. There are parallels. You know, people, people of, 
exactly. People of color are who they are. People that are trans are who they are too. And the thing about it is, is like, people also need to get to a point that I'm seeing is if you say someone's trans, don't, you know, you don't need to whisper, oh, they're, they're trans. You know, it's, yeah. it's just like saying, oh, that person's black. Why are you whispering that? Is it yeah. bad to be black? No. Is it, no, is it bad to be trans? No. no it's they, a fucking trans. adjective. Calm they're down. Trans. Right. Like it's, it's, oh. it's a respect thing too. Yeah. Like, I'm not gonna, you know, this, this is something that we had, we had talked about for like hours on end and I wholeheartedly agree, you know, you need to talk with people like respect for, for what they are, you mm-hmm. know? I hear that. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, to, to summarize, I definitely, I want to make it clear that like, uh, there, that, 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 that this is not a trend. Um, and even the bisexual thing, you know, it's not a trend, right? The people are bisexual, people are transgender, uh, and non-binary people are basically the fucking bisexuals of the transgender community. Like that's just what it is, right? Like, um, when things get more detailed and more, and the more detailed things get, the more of a minority uh, the people who fit that category become. And as we can literally see, like Jesse was saying, you know, with with the Black Lives Matter movement and everything, as we can literally see, uh, the more specific you try to narrow down a category, the more oppression that is going to happen. Right. So, like, uh, we need to like look at it from this perspective of like, okay, like. Trans is anyone who's not cis. So that includes all non-binary identities and it includes um, identities that are outside of the binary and, and like agender people or whatever. That that includes trans. You're either trans or you're, or, or you're cis. And uh, and cis is like is just two very specific identities um, like right here on this one side and right here on this other side. And and that's it. And like, actually, I I I would imagine that probably more people are trans than they realize that they're yeah. trans. Um, and so I wouldn't say that that's a trend. I would say that, you know, someone who might have presented and even thought of themselves as cis for their entire lives upon reading and learning about about um, non-binary identities might say like, oh shit, you know what? Like, I'm non-binary. I don't want to change my gender. I don't want to change my clothes. I don't want to change anything about me. But, but I don't feel like I fit 100% into this arbitrary list of categories and I want to be non-binary. I want to be recognized as non-binary or I want to change my pronouns. Like, fine. They are trans. Absolutely. Right? You don't yeah. have to fit into this fucking narrative to be trans and no one is more trans or less trans than the other. Like, if you are really bothered by being cis, if you are really bothered by the idea of cis, like, I've seen some people on Twitter be like, oh my god, I'm not cis. I'm not. Stop calling me cis. Like, there you you might be more non-binary than you fucking realize. Like, just, like... Takes and it's some not time. complicated. No, it's, it's not. not. <laughs> it's it's not. And I, I think you actually, as a straight white man, one of the biggest things, as a straight white empathetic man, should I say, <laughs> like one of the things I see that like upset people, like is, the, you know, in the gay, lesbian, you know, trans community is, uh, they're just like, oh, it's so confusing, you know, this or that, and you just you simplified it right there. Yeah. You're you're cis or you're trans. Yes, that's it. And if you're and if you're a cis, that's a whole d- different set of categories. It's whatever, and like, it's fine. You know, it, cis it's like is you, valid. You, you're either this way or you're not this way. And right. I I actually am glad I came here to talk to you for a second. I actually am supposed to be in another call right now, but someone else was like, "Oh, they're doing this live thing." I was like, "I want to do it." Yeah. <laughs> I wanna go. I want to see what they're talking about for a second. But um, no, completely. I support you guys. Definitely have my support. Hey, thanks for dro- dropping by. Hey, no problem. Have a good one. Jesse uh, nice Keaton, everybody. You. Magnavox. Yeah. <laughs> Peace. Well, that was pleasant. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Any more? Um. Any more white white cis males want to jump in? <laughs> Right. I uh, don't don't mean that uh, in a derogatory way, of course. Like, uh, and I feel like both um, both Vincent and um, and Jesse would appreciate that. Uh. Yeah, no, I, it's, god damn, I, I am struggling to remember what we were talking about. I get distracted so easily, and then, like, you know, coming back is, 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 um, is a bit oh, challenging. Right. We were um, talking about becoming a trend. Yes. And I think no. I'm a little misunderstood when I said that, but I, hopefully my intent was, came across, because, again, okay. there are, there are people who support it. There are people who use it just to fit in. 
because I don't know mm. they're jellyfish they don't have a spine like that yeah no no that's that's toxicity that. right uh, but I I would I would I would go away from calling it a trend um, just because uh, there there it's not quite this the narrative that you were pushing um, or, or suggesting but there are people who are pushing a narrative that um, that trans that trans people are part of a cult what uh, yes and so usually when like if you look on Twitter, there's actually a Twitter account called and I don't want to plug them like I really don't want to give them a platform. But there there are uh, in fact, I won't say their name. You can figure it out if you want to. But there are people on Twitter um, that call uh, trans a trend, you know, and and if you read what they have to say and if you read the articles that they post, it's a, it's a very toxic ideology that suggests that all trans people are 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 joining this um, gender identity cult um, and and that we have like we, we have developed a religion around it and um, and we have a special kind of trans ideology and that's what they're calling like you know our pronouns and stuff and they use that narrative of, of, it, of this being a trend and they see it as a trend because uh, because trans people were less visible in the past in our culture. And now that we are becoming more visible, especially now that non-binary identities are becoming visible, they're seeing this as a trend. I mean, these are people that have never heard of it before, never understood, uh, never understood it. They're seeing it come out of nowhere from their perspective. We've existed from the dawn of mankind, but from their perspective, we are new. They are threatened by us and they feel like this is a trend. There is, we have nothing literally in common Except that we are not cis. That is all that trans people have in common. Beyond that, we are everything. We are teachers. We are scientists. We are strippers. We are everything. Um, and But it, it, it's not a fucking trend, right? There is no one correct way to be trans. Uh, mm -hmm. When I talk about, like, you know, how people should behave or whatever, I'm talking about that, like... Uh, from 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 a perspective of like common human decency, right? Like, and I will say occasionally, and I'm guilty of this, right? Like, like uh, you know, you shouldn't fucking say that. But if I say that, it's like someone's probably making like a wild generalization about people, right? So like when I when I'm not trying to tone police you when you're talking about the, you know, the, uh, a transgender trend. I just want to make sure that you know our listeners are 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 very clear and understanding. Uh, that 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 it is that it is not a trend right no one is choosing to be trans because it's cool to be trans and hey you know what like if someone does well they probably were trans all along right like it is cool to be trans right but like if you feel like hey i think i would be happier as trans like it seems cool to be trans then you're probably fucking trans like you probably really are but like we don't need to police each other no one is more trans than another you are trans or you are cis if you hate cis then you're probably trans that's okay yeah, it's okay. Exactly. Like, welcome to the non-binary. You, we're unplugging you um, yes. from the gender binary, from the matrix, which we haven't talked about at all, and and that's okay. Um, we'll talk about it next time. <laughs> yeah. And honestly, I'd like to add, you, you know, the whole not judging by who's ever supposedly less or more non-binary than mm -hmm. you. Um, let's uh, let's mention dysphoria. Just yes, because someone has less of dysphoria also does not make them any less trans. No, absolutely not. No, yeah. you, you don't need dysphoria to be trans, right? That's all part of what I was talking about before, of that, like, very strict, outdated, um, the only true transsexual path. That, that uh, the, you know, the, 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 all that crap that I memorized uh, as a teenager because I, I knew I wanted hormones. I knew I was a fucking woman. I didn't want to waste years and years and years and years proving to a psychologist that I'm a fucking woman. Yeah. Um and that's what that is. That's 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 a residual of that thought process of the idea yeah. that it's a mental illness. It's obviously not a mental illness. You know, I say this all the time, right? Like, OK, transgender people, we understand there is a disconnect between our brain and our body. I mean, this is this is true. Our body is saying one thing and our brain is saying something else. Whatever our brain is saying, our brain might be saying that we're androgynous. Our brain might be saying we want a mix of these characteristics or whatever. But our body and more importantly, society telling us based on our body, uh, you know, there's a disconnect between that, between our brain and our body. So we have to figure out, like, you know, which is which is wrong. Is it the brain that's wrong or is it the body that's wrong? And I would say that if our brains are functioning perfectly well in every other respect, right? Like, I, I can think for myself. I did fine in school. I got A's and B's and everything, right? Like, that, like my brain is fine. 
uh, that the problem is not in my brain, but in my body. So, so for me, you know, it, this is like when I take medicine, I'm not taking medicine to fix my brain. I'm not taking hormones for a mental disorder. I'm taking it for a physical disorder. Uh, you know, and 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 many many non-binary people may be happy with their bodies, and and that's fine. That's part of the whole diversity of it, right? But you are not crazy because your brain, you, which is you, your brain is you, recognizes that you are something different from what other people are telling you based on your physical characteristics. You are not crazy for knowing who you are. And I think yeah. that's the most important thing to like to take away because like that seems to be what uh, cis cis het people and and even cis gay people just cis people in general that seems to be their biggest uh, struggle with understanding and even for trans people I struggled to understand that I struggled to understand that like I'm not the crazy one here it's the rest of the fucking world trying to tell me that I am this way or that way when they don't fucking have any clue what's going on in my head because they're not trans they've never experienced any of it. So they're trying to fit my experiences into their narrative, which is not going to work because their narrative is not compatible with reality. It's very strict. They have a list of arbitrary things that define male, arbitrary things that define female. I don't fit into that list of arbitrary things, and that drives them nuts. But yep. they're the ones that have the problem, not me. Exactly. They're just going to have to learn that right now we're in a stage of evolution where people are starting to learn how to be authentic. That way the reality becomes much better. And there are some people who refuse to let go of what they were told reality should be. Yeah. And that's not on the fault of the person who wants to evolve. And that, that is literally why the matrix is so fucking cool. Um, because, because, you know, and, and, and I won't talk about it too much. Um, but, but that, the Matrix was is is was is an allegory for uh, for the transgender experience. This was confirmed by the creators who are trans women. Um, so, you know, like the Matrix is literally a a metaphor for the gender binary, and it is a very strict set of rules. And they say this over and over in the trilogy. It's a very strict set of rules that this world exists by. And you cannot be free until you unplug yourself from that. And that's what non-binary people are. Non-binary people are people who have unplugged themselves from the gender binary. And I think that, you know, you can do that in more traditional uh, male and female identities. Like, I believe that I have a pretty traditional female identity. But um. I, as a kid, I was, frankly, I was a tom girl. you know? I liked video games. I liked getting dirty. I liked going outside. And and I had a lot of male friends in high school and stuff. And, and um, I'm sorry, I said tom girl, tomboy. I was a tomboy. Um, mm. I was oh, a that's, that was perfect. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, I was a tomboy. And so this is something that was always very difficult for people to understand because they're like, well, I don't understand. You fit all these characteristics of like being a boy, like, but like I, I fit all the characteristics of being a boy in the same way that like other tomboys do, right? Like my idol growing up was Avril Lavigne, who was a huge fucking tomboy. Um, you know, she owned neckties, she owned skateboards, you know, uh, but like there was nothing about her that was also not feminine. She just, you know, was very comfortable in her femininity and, and also embraced, you know, some masculine aspects and that, that was me. And so that, that's, you know, being, being a tomboy and basically rejecting, fe I reject female stereotypes, but I yeah. still, I, I still am female. Uh, and that is something that's very difficult for people to, to understand. So I think that, you know, I think that being non-binary is something that, that potentially everyone can do. They can just sort of unplug themselves from this bullshit binary and say like, hey, you know what? I'm non-binary and I'm completely comfortable with everything. I'm completely comfortable with the way that I am. I'm completely comfortable with my body. I'm completely comfortable with all of this. Now, now I'm not trying to convert cis people into non-binary here. I know people are going to try to twist it into that, but I'm saying that like, again, if you don't identify with a very strict set and no one even fucking knows what they are because depending on who you ask and what category you ask, no one fucking knows like exactly what it means to be 100% male or 100% female. So in that respect, I think that everyone is probably non-binary. Um, 
it's yeah. I, I think it's OK to, you know, to 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 unplug yourself and to own that and to be a part of it and not and not. Not to do it like you were saying, like to try to claim any sort of superiority. There is nothing wrong with being cis, right? Like if you very, very, very strongly identify with the gender that was assigned to you at birth, then that's fine. Hold on to that. You be you. I'm proud of you. I love you just the way you are. All that we're that's asking exactly for. what you're pushing for, right? Yeah. You're just saying you be you. Yes. That goes for everyone on the spectrum. You know yes. what I mean? Yes. Gender, sexuality, whatever. You yes. be you authentically. Do not yes. be afraid to check off yourself just because that box exists. If it doesn't, hell, that means you've really found yourself. Fuck the boxes, you know? That's why I really like, I really like a, a lot of forms. Um, they're, uh, you know, some, some of my, um, some of the doctors that I go to, not all of them, but some of them have forms that, that, that have like gender and then just like a line and you can write whatever you want there. I fucking love that. Stop giving us these fucking boxes that we're supposed to cram ourselves into because we don't fit. No one fits perfectly into any goddamn box. Exactly. And we need to normalize these things. We need to normalize and introducing yourself with a pronoun that's not weird that's not no. perverse that's being authentic and that's wanting to be seen for the mm -hmm. discovery of that authenticity yeah oh so, yeah and that's something you know i i i wanted to it didn't it, you know we, we i wanted to bring it up when we when we had uh when we had our our brief our brief guests uh the brief the the the, the two cis white men that came in that that they both seem to have a little bit of an awkwardness with the with the pronouns and 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 i and i wish we could have talked about this when they when they were there i hope that they come back and listen to this the the full um podcast but but yes introducing yourself with pronouns is very important and um and and it can also be uncomfortable right so like me a trans woman, like I, I didn't know people had started to do this. When I went back into the closet and detransitioned for that six year period, um, people did. One person approached me, and uh, you know, and and he asked me what my pronoun. He introduced himself with his pronouns, and then asked me what my pronouns were. Um, he's like, you know, hi, hi, I'm so and so. My pronouns are he and him. Um, what are yours? And I was like, what the fuck? Like I, <laughs> like I had not experienced that before, and I was like, I I was freaked out, you know. I I was a trans person freaked out by that, and I'd seen people putting their their pronouns on Twitter in the bios and 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 everything, and and I was like, oh my god, I'm so uncomfortable with this. Um, and I'd seen people saying like, even if you're cis, you must put your pronouns, and like like okay, whoa, 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 we need to slow down here because like I, I was, I you know, I was halfway in the closet. And there are many, many trans people who are not comfortable. And I don't want anyone to ever feel like they have to um, misgender themselves uh, for the sake of not looking for the sake of looking like they're a trans ally, especially if they're trans in the closet. Like, holy fucking shit. So, like, I understand how fucking awkward that is. And, and but but at the same time, I feel like it is important to normalize introducing yourself with pronouns. Hi, you know, my name is Persephone. My pronouns are she and her. Um, but I would also personally try not to ask someone what their pronouns are um i would because i i kind of feel like that puts people on the spot and i don't feel like that's necessarily something that everyone should should have to be and at the same time i want anyone who's listening to this who might be in the closet i want them to also feel like it's okay for you to say like if someone says like hey my pronouns are she her or what are yours i want you to know that it's it it is okay um, for you to say, I, I'm not sure yet. Um, I'm still figuring that out. And if you are in the closet and you feel like you have to misgender yourself, um, to protect yourself, like, please don't feel bad about it. You know, please, we, 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 we do understand that. Um, and it is, it is a really tough and awkward, you know, we, you know, all society is sort of in a puberty of acceptance with, um, with, transgender people and we are having those those growing pains so like i put my pronouns in my bio two days ago i i didn't want to do it for a long time just because it fucking bothered me um so we i i get it i get it and 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 and, and it's okay and, and 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 please don't feel ever pressured to you know reveal or even understand your pronouns if you're still trying to figure it out and other people need to like learn to accept that you know like just do your best well because we're all we're all trying to to navigate this together you know cis and trans people alike this is a difficult time for everyone mm -hmm. absolutely
but yeah, I mean, it's it should it should be normalized. It should be okay to introduce yourself with with pronouns and um, and to display your pronouns absolutely. And if you know you don't display them and 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 and, and you get misgendered, uh, it's you need to feel co- comfortable correcting yourself and and it, or correcting other people. And if you don't feel comfortable correcting, it's it, it's okay. You know, it's it's all okay. We're gonna get through this. It's just a rocky path. Mm-hmm. Just because I think the main problem is that there's still no clear definition of what it means, you know, to to accept yourself as trans and to be in an umbrella instead of, a, again, a, a set in stone box. And everyone is arguing even within the trans community, mm-hmm. just like you said before, over what it means to be trans and how can we categorize this and this. It's, it's I think uh, we need to quit that shit. I think we need to yeah. quit that shit. You know, like, like, like. I'm not saying, you know, trans mask, trans femme, uh, a gender, neutral, all of them, you know, like y- you are welcome to that. Right. Like it's it's fine. But these are not necessary um, categories that you feel like you must push yourself into or, 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 or not. You know, like like for me, like, you know, I don't go around saying like, hi, I'm Persephone Rose. I am a non-binary female. You know, I like, you know, I'm not it's not it's not like the fucking trans military and I'm trying to show my name and rank and stuff like you know, I don't do that. At most, I'm like my my pronouns are she her. That's it. You know, I don't need I don't feel the need to explain beyond that. Like, OK, I am a non-binary woman. You know, I don't like none of that fucking matters. You know, I bring it up in this conversation only because that's what we're talking about. And it's relevant. Uh-huh. Um, and so I feel like that need to categorize categorize ourselves to that level. That's that comes from that that the, the the toxicity of the binary that we are trying to unplug ourselves from you know like we need to stop creating this fucking like this obsession with categories we need to break free of it <laughs> however don't you think it would be easier to relate to others in your position if you did have something to clearly define yourself as that's the yeah. other side of the coin so for example as much as I was comfortable saying I was Mm non-binary, I became happier identifying as transmasculine because that accurately represents me more. Yes, no, keep keep that. I'm I'm not trying to say that we should get rid of that. I'm trying to say that we should not feel the need to push everyone into these categories. Yes. Right? So like, yes, absolutely keep trans mask because I know tons of people that identify as trans mask that you're going to fit in great with. that is that is valid and we should we need to keep those identities and we need to make them visible but i think what's what's also important is that like it's we also need to normalize like not fitting into a box if you don't want to if if there's a fucking box that looks great go there mm-hmm. you know i've got my favorite chinese restaurants the same fucking thing you know i don't just eat any food right i'm gonna go to that chinese restaurant that i like to go to that's what that's that's all that is right like there's a box that you fit into go have fun in that club you know, but but you, but, don't, have but you don't have to, right? Like, like, don't, like, and I, and that's what I'm trying to say that you know, uh, not just for trans people, but for everyone. Like, stop trying to fit into fucking boxes. Yes, yes, create these groups uh, and and identities that that so that you can get along with people who have similar experiences, right? Like, I'm in I'm in all kinds of groups. I'm in groups for like adventure game lovers and shit. You know, I'm in groups for voice actors and stuff. Like, you know, those are those are identities that I have. Those are things I identify with. Those are things that I love, you know? Um, We should have those labels, but we shouldn't be forcing people into those labels, you know? Which is why, like, I get kind of annoyed when I'm reading things and people are, like, like, like throwing around even, like, political labels, like, uh, oh, you're a fucking Republican or you're a fucking liberal or you're a leftist or all this crap, like, you know? Like, and and I think those are also uh, potentially hurtful labels, you know? And then that... These are things that people should identify for themselves, not be assigned, right? Like, people are always assigning me leftist, and I don't even fucking know what that means. Um, <laughs> you know, like, I I consider myself politically non-binary, and I like to leave it at that. You know, I want to listen to what the politicians are saying, uh, and then I'm going to vote based on who I feel has the better argument. And I'm not, I don't just blindly vote with the group. That's, that's how I feel about that, and I feel like it applies like similarly to uh the the transgender experience right so like if you identify as a democrat and you want to go to the democratic convention great that's more power to you but like we we should not feel 
like we are compelled to fit into a, a box and we should not feel like we need to push everyone else into a box as well. You know, like let people talk about their gender identity if it's relevant to the conversation um, and if they want to talk about it. And if not, move on. You know, if they don't feel comfortable giving you their pronouns, move on and talk about other things because most of us don't want to talk about this all the time. We really would like to live normal lives and go about like our actual hobbies and interests because like being trans is not really like, it's not a club. It's not a, uh, it's not a hobby, you know, it's not like, it's just like a, a very small element of our identities that ends up being like the focus of our identities for people who don't understand it. And that is something that is um, really frustrating. Absolutely. So, I feel like I said like six different things and like I that was completely like I don't I don't even know I don't even know if I'm being coherent here. So You're like being coherent. Okay, I'm, good. I'm, Thank I'm you. <laughs> I need I need to do that. You know the, the 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 first two episodes of not the half of it I I wrote as scripts, right? I wasn't not, this off the cuff stuff is like that's very 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 new for me. Um Yeah. It sounds more organic though and then it leaves room for discussion. And it leaves room to talk about other things and get someone else's opinion. Yeah, so I, I I like the format. I'm not against it. I like it. I think I think I, I think I would like to probably keep it, keep it this way. Um, you know, the just the open, the open, the open. Like you know, people can just walk in and talk. And if it gets if it gets to a point where we have too many people, then we'll we'll probably, you know, have people actually call in, call in. Um, yeah. To to join in, but like right now, you know, just like people wandering in and out, I I think it's it's fine. Join the conversation and move out. I I I love the organicness of it. You know, I think that's yeah. Im I think that's important. I think I think this is what we need. We need an open door and a continuing conversation. And I think that we're we're accomplishing that here. Yeah, I agree. If there was too many people, we'll have a segment where it's like, hey, caller number one. Yeah, yeah, and and we could we could even you know have a we could have a. a a bonus episode or something that's just like 30 people yelling at each other, you know? Uh, <laughs> the chaotic Q&A. Everything goes. Good luck. Yeah, and I'll probably just record it and mute myself just for the humor of it. Um, but anyway, a little little sidetrack there. Were, were there any anything else, anything else that we wanted to cover in this conversation? No, but we definitely need to talk about The Matrix in another episode. We do. We do. I really wanted to talk about it. So um, you, you probably should watch them again. Um, like, you know, so you can have it fresh in your mind. Uh, ooh, and ooh. yeah. We talk about the trans aspect and the metaphysical aspect. Sure. Yeah. There, right. are, there are many layers to the Matrix beyond just the trans stuff. The trans stuff just gets me so excited because like the Matrix is one of the coolest trilogies of all time. Yes. And, um, you know, especially like having lost Harry Potter, which was a very important and formulative so a series of books for me as a kid, you know, like it's, it's, it was very heartbreaking to lose that, but to like gain the matrix in like this, like really, really fucking awesome, badass way, uh, was very, very, very exciting to me, um, as a trans yeah. person. So, but yeah, there, there are, there are absolutely many, many levels to the matrix, um, beyond just the trans allegory. And I would love to talk about all of them and, mm -hmm. Maybe this is going to get some of you listeners excited to, like, come in and talk about it with us, too. Yes. Bring on the spiritual stuff. Sure. Feel free to mention aliens if you feel like it. The aliens are awesome. I mean, I I think the only reason we haven't met aliens is because they uh, rolled the windows up while they pass our planet. Because this is like, don't stop there. Like, you know, I know you got to pee, kids, but, like, keep going. That is not a safe neighborhood. They just don't want to... They don't want to get uh, their perspectives distorted and vice versa, so they kind of observe from a distance. But when they do have to interact with humans, they do learn a lot. Yeah, I do have experience in this regard, so that's definitely a conversation for another time. You met um, some aliens? Well, conversation for another time. <laughs> okay, you're going to become a recurring guest, just so you know. I'm not joking either. I'm not trolling. I, uh, I know. I know. We're, we're, we we want to hear it. We want to yeah, hear it. I'll, much um i have a friend who uh who i talked with my ex about my experiences with without a sensor authentically and they're like hold up i'll be right back they went into their room they came back and they they gave me this typed up book 
which looks like it was written on a typewriter. And he's like, you have to read this. So I, I'm flipping through this. And it was written by his old biology teacher from high school. And the things that he wrote about and the things that he's seen here in Virginia, when it comes to ETs and his experiences, he's like, I had no one else to talk to about this. I had to write it down because people are going to think I'm crazy. I hardcore related to that material. And there are, there are meetings happening here. It's not even just like UFOs landing. They're, they're among us. They're among us. And it's not that they don't want to be known. It's some of them have rules. Sure. And some of them know that if they are known, it's going to cause a spike in our evolution and not uh, in a good way. Well, yeah, I want to hear more about this. Um, okay. And I would really like some alien friends. So, like, if there's an alien, especially one that has, like, a spaceship, because, like, one of my life goals really is to fucking get into space at least once before I die. So, like, you know, if there's a if there's a, a chill, you know, alien, preferably, like, a trans or non-binary alien, uh, I would like to hang out and get to know you and, and check out your spaceship. Let's go back to the whole trans and non-binary thing, okay? Yeah. Our Earth, our Earth gives us two sexes, okay? Well, then there's intersex people, but, you know. Mm -hmm. so, so let's say we organically have three genders, three sexes, okay? You got your male, you got your female, you got your intersex, whatever variants those are, right? Um, cuttlefish and seahorses and things like that, how many sexes do they have? I don't know. A lot. So when it comes to other races, they don't have the same paradigms that we do in our reality. Basic things to them that are completely different from us will cause some of the people, some humans that learn this to snap. Because it just, the brain will go, okay, it, it's not fucking working. I can't understand. They'll be speaking English, talk, and I, again, this is from experience. They'll mm -hmm. be speaking English, telling you about their reality. And your brain is just going around in circles because it doesn't know how to, uh, it's not one plus one. Yeah. Anymore. Well, I mean, I, 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 ex I experienced that as a trans person talking to people. I mean, like the cognitive dissonance is very real. Yeah. And, um, you know, people, people trying to define my existence to me when I'm like, look, shut the fuck up. I know what I am. I know who I am. I'm telling you my gender identity just because you can't understand it. So it totally makes sense that, you know, like that, uh, what you're saying that, that extraterrestrials would have, uh, completely different biologies and um and paradigms than, than than we would that makes perfect sense and then there's the difference between extraterrestrials and extra dimensional yeah okay it's another layer up upward which they're not the same thing being from another star system does not equal being from the same realm true that makes this sense this is my favorite quote of all time and it's from simon parks and if i don't want to get your series in trouble but simon parks was a politician in the uk that actually came out as being a mantid and mantid is a, uh, a species of alien and um he said we don't live in a universe we live in a multiverse where each verse has its own master and that that stuck with me like i felt that if you don't know what that means it's like i haven't heard any of this a complete matrix where you have dimensions, you know, let's say zero to 13 and every single one of them has its own master source or God. Yeah, this is all very new to me. The first <laughs> time I'm he first time I'm hearing it. I, I did not hear about a mantis a politician. Oh yeah. I have a lot of resources if you'd like to know, but that's the stuff that I really dig deep in. And that's the stuff that I am most interested in. And, um, create within if that makes sense yeah no i think we should dedicate another episode to that and i'd like you to lead it um because that's cool. very fascinating very very fascinating i'm very interested to hear what you have to say about that oh yeah <laughs> um, <Hello>. yeah <laughs> so i guess um i guess we'll wind this wind up this episode um it's been uh what oh has it been like two hours jesus yes <laughs> Okay, this is, well, the, you know, the, the first two episodes are not the half of it. We're like 10 minutes each. So like, uh, Holy shit. <laughs> uh, thank you to everyone who's listened all the way through um, this uh, episode, the first episode of uh, not the half of it. Um, 
Serge, it was great having you on the show. I really enjoyed talking to you. Um, I learned a lot. I, I hope that uh, everyone who's listening has learned a lot. And um, we'll definitely have to do this again soon. Definitely. Thank you very much for having me on your show. And this is my very first podcast, so I am loving the experience so far. Great. Well, I hope that you share it with everyone that you know. Hell yeah. All right. Take care, everyone. Sometimes you just need to vent, especially when all of your patience is spent.